Okay, now we're going to look at hypothesis testing using normal distributions, which basically means we're going to now use the normal distribution to find our p-value. So we have two different possibilities. Either it's below a negative value or it's above a positive value, because our p-values will either be negative or positive. So we're going to work with the normal distribution the way we would for finding a p-value. So the area below a negative 0 0.8. So we have our normal distribution, and 0 is in the middle. So negative 0.8 is going to be someplace to the left of 0. So the area in which we're interested is this shaded area, everything below negative 0.8. Now, in order to find the value, we're going to go on the calculator to second vars. Then we're going to go down to number 2, which says normal CDF. And then depending on your calculator, you'll either be asked questions or you'll have to enter numbers. And basically what you're going to end up with is normal CDF, the lower limit, and the upper limit. Well, in this case, we really don't have a lower limit. It's a strictly less than. So then we're going to put a negative 999 as our lower limit. Our upper limit is negative 0.8. Now, it might also ask you for a mean and a standard deviation. And if it does, your mean is 0, your standard deviation is 1. So let's look at the calculator. So that's second VARS, option number 2 which is normal CDF. Now I have a calculator that asks me for the different values. So the lower limit is a negative 999. The upper limit is a negative 0 0.8. And then just leave mean and standard deviation as 0 and 1. If you just have to put it in linearly, you would put negative 999 and negative 0 0.8, and you don't have to enter the 0 and 1 because it's understood that that's what it is if nothing's entered. So we hit enter, and we get that the area is 0.2119. So this is 0 0.2119. And if we were doing a hypothesis test, this would be our p-value. Now we're looking at the area above z equal to 1.2. We're getting our normal distribution, our normal curve. 0 is in the middle. 1.2 is up here someplace. We want everything above it. Same steps. And we'll basically end up with normal CDF. Now we have a lower limit of 1.2. We do not have an upper limit. So we just put in 999. So second VARS. Normal CDF, 1.2 is our lower, 999 is our upper, the rest stay the same, and then hit enter, we have 0.1151. Again, if we were doing a hypothesis test, this would be our p-value. So the next one, we actually are doing a hypothesis test. So in a study connected by the Pew Foundation, we learned that 67% of women in a random sample view divorce as morally acceptable. Does this provide evidence that more than 60% of women view divorce as morally acceptable? The standard error for the estimate, assuming the null hypothesis is true, is 0.021. 
Now, we haven't learned how to find the standard error yet, which is why we are giving it to you. So the null and alternative. The null would be that the proportion equals 0.6. The alternative, it says evidence that more than 0.6, so P is greater than. 0.6, and then we should define the parameter. So P is the proportion of women who view divorce as morally acceptable. The standardized test statistic, Z is statistic minus null over standard error. So our statistic is 0.67 minus 0 0.60, which is the value in the null over the standard error of 0.21. This gives us 0 0.07 over 0 0.21, and if we divide it out, we get 3.3333 for as many decimal places as you want. Now we want to use the normal standard to find the p-value. So the p-value, it's a right tail. So we do normal CDF, 3.3333999. So second VARS, normal CDF. 3.3333999. We get 4.2917 E negative 4. Because the p value is a probability, if you have anything other than zero to the left of the decimal point, then you should be looking for that negative exponent. It has changed it to scientific notation. This would be equivalent to 0 0.00042917. Now the conclusion of the test, 4.2917, E negative 4, is smaller than any reasonable significance level. We reject the null hypothesis. And there is evidence that more than 60% of women you divorce as morally acceptable. Note in my conclusion, I basically just went back and copied what the question was asking.